which follows. Strawberries you get off the farm, you know, pick out in the, in the country, in the woods. See, they, they taste a lot better, I think, than the ones you buy in the store here. Everybody had a garden, you know, in those days. Everybody had a garden. And our stores had those fresh vegetables better than they have nowadays. My father was a farmer. We have pigs. We have uh, a lot of chickens. I raised a lot of turkeys. And all of those things, that was my life. I used to bake bread and buns and, and baking powder biscuits. And well, I always did that too. You couldn't go down and buy things there. As I say, you can go into any store now and come out and you can have everything that you want. But it wasn't that great then. Oh, I got the chili verde, the salsa, and tortilla. Ever. We used to have fresh milk every day. Most everybody had cows in those days. It's the happiest life a people can have when you're born in a ranch and raised in your ranch. Everything was fresh and nice. The United States of America, 1900. Sixty percent of the people lived in rural areas. Food they ate came mostly from their own farms or the farms of their neighbors. Most cities were small and were surrounded by farmland. The fresh food brought into market had to be bought and consumed within a few days before it spoiled. You didn't have the supermarket like we have now, you know. But the stores, of course, they had no uh, refrigeration because I can remember the open bin, you know, when you get the prunes out of the big bin and the rice and the flour and anything else. And you had to go a long way to the, the nearest uh, town, I guess it was about 10 miles away. They don't go to the store every week. If a food wasn't grown locally or if it wasn't in season, probably wasn't available. No, an orange was a treat. You know, oranges, I thought oranges only grew for Christmas. <laughs> the United States of America, today. More than 85% of the people live in cities and suburbs. Great urban complexes stretch for hundreds of miles. And the millions of people who live in the megalopolis, the giant city, are far removed from the sources of their food. Where does food come from? The shopping center. Where does the shopping center get it? I don't know. Does it come from farms? Yeah, I guess so. You ever been on a farm? No. You ever seen a cow? Sure, on television. In Megalopolis, it's possible to live a lifetime without seeing a food-producing animal or a field of growing crops. Megalopolis has exchanged the farms of the surrounding countryside for the farms of a continent and the farms of the world. And never before has there been such great variety in the selection of foods available. Seasons are shipped in by fast freight. And time itself has been packaged. Since 1900, the population of the United States has more than doubled. But the amount of land being farmed has decreased. In 1900, more than 16 acres of land were being farmed for each family in the United States. Today, it's less than six acres. 
Obviously, we've found ways to produce more food on less land. What are the raw materials that a plant must have in order to grow? Atoms of carbon and oxygen from carbon dioxide gas in the air. Atoms of hydrogen from water. Atoms of nitrogen from the soil, along with small quantities of several different minerals. Which of these raw materials can be limiting factors that determine how much growth there will be on a given amount of land? Carbon and oxygen are never limiting factors. There's always plenty in the air. But each crop leaves the soil poorer in nitrogen and minerals. If nitrogen and minerals are not put back into the soil, the land will be able to support less and less growth. More than 30 million tons of fertilizer are spread each year on fields in the United States. The purpose of fertilizers is to put nitrogen and minerals into the soil so that the land can produce up to its full potential. The supply of hydrogen may also be a limiting factor to growth. If there isn't enough water. Nearly 40% of the Earth's land surface receives too little rainfall to support most agriculture. But when water can be supplied, By supplying water and fertilizer, raw materials for building plants, barren land has been made to produce, and fertile land has been made to produce more. And I'll tell you another thing, when Henry Ford opened his Ford plant and took all the boys off the farm that started havoc in the country, you couldn't get a farmer for lover money. We seed our rice by airplane. It does a better job and cuts man hours by 90%. This planter seeds six rows of sugar beets at a time, fertilizes them, and spreads a weed killer to stop growth between the rows. I can remember when it took 12 men a week to harvest this field. The three men driving these combines started this morning. They'll be finished by sundown. One man can milk 60 cows an hour in this milking parlor. It used to take a good man an hour and a lot of hard work to milk 10. These new pea harvesters cost me near $1,000 a piece. They cut my man hours on the job by some 95%. I really can't afford to do without them. I have a big gang of men to harvest this cornfield. Now I can do it faster by myself. We fed a beef cattle in this yard, and it all do it. Everything's mechanized but the cows. With these shakers and catcher conveyors, four of us can harvest more than 300 trees a day. 
It would take 40 men to do it without the machine. Modern farming results in bigger crops, produced on less land by fewer farmers. But we have to fight for what we grow. We have competition for our food. At least one-seventh of all the food planted in the world is destroyed by insect pests. We fight back with pesticides. These aphids have been dusted with DDT. These orange trees are being sprayed against citrus red scale. We have quite a problem with different chemicals, with the insect becoming resistant to the chemicals. The citrus red spider mite in particular builds resistance very readily to different miticides, and so we have to continually search for new materials and try to... New pesticides are constantly being developed and tested. Radioactive tracers can be used to determine how each species of plant absorbs the new pesticide. Does the pesticide go where it does any good? How much remains in the plant and for how long? Only when a pesticide has been proven safe for use on a particular crop can it be used on that crop. And then it must be used following explicit instructions. Food on which pesticides have been used is spot tested on analytical equipment sensitive enough to detect one-tenth of a part of pesticide residue in one million parts of food matter. Our battle in the competition for food is a difficult and expensive one. But as populations expand, and there are more and more people to feed, we can less and less afford to grow food to be destroyed. As soon as food is harvested, another competition begins. Will the food spoil before it can be eaten? This orange is spoiling because it's being consumed by microorganisms. This apple is spoiling because enzymes within it are still active and are causing destructive changes to take place. Processing food is largely an effort to stop the activity of enzymes and to keep microorganisms from growing in the food and consuming it. If I have a dollar that I can't, that I, that I put in canned fruit, I will be a millionaire boy. <laughs> I, I can fruit but, but hundred can't. When food is sealed into a can, the microorganisms outside are kept out. When the sealed cans are heated, the microorganisms inside are killed, and the enzymes in the food are inactivated. Canned foods can keep for years. When fresh milk is heated in pasteurization coils, microorganisms in the milk are destroyed. Refrigerated, pasteurized milk will keep without spoiling for two weeks or more. A fast treatment with superheated steam deactivates enzymes in freshly harvested food. 
and freezing slows the activities of the microorganisms that are in the food. Frozen foods keep for many months, so long as they remain frozen. The practice of processing food for preservation is as old as agriculture. When people depend for their lives on the food they raise, they must find ways to store it and keep it from spoiling between harvests. Today, only the best of crops are selected for processing. Every stage of the processing is controlled and inspected to guard against damage, contamination, and nutrient and flavor loss. As a result of processing, foods can be safely stored and shipped for use whenever and wherever they are needed. But how many people in the world shop at supermarkets. And how many people in the world have refrigerators? departed thence and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with oxen before him. When he hath made plain the face of the ground, doth he not cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley and rye in their place? So she gleaned in the field unto even, and winnowed out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. The words are from the Old Testament, but the farming is happening today. Two-thirds of a modern world still has to depend on primitive farming techniques. The result is a constant shortage of food, which means malnutrition for many. And hunger, with the ever-present threat of starvation for some. Modern medicine has reached areas where agriculture has remained primitive. <coughs> Techniques for saving life are being introduced and put into practice worldwide. Death rates go down and populations grow. There are now just over three billion people alive in the world. At the present rate of growth, in the year 2000, there will be six billion. How will six billion people be fed by a world that is not producing enough food now to feed half as many? I wouldn't say that everything tasted better. It tasted, it, I don't believe that it tasted any different than it would if we were right in the fields now with it. I think it's because of the uh, uh, storing and the freezing of food that I think takes the flavor out of food. Well, uh, it's different. It's different. They have a lot of things that we never even use it on the food. Now it's uh, a new style, boy. It's a new world, if I tell you the truth. For me, it's a new world. I am sometimes of some of the new things they have, but I don't know. I think we had better times in our early days than they do nowadays. There are still many parts of the world where most people are close to the source of their food, where few fertilizers are used, where the balance of nature is never tampered with 
where there is little processing of food. And these are the parts of the world where there is hunger. Hunger in more than half the world today and world population to be doubled by the end of the century. There is no going back. The only choice is to go forward, to greatly extend the worldwide application of modern agricultural techniques in a life or death struggle to produce enough food to feed those who are hungry today and those billions more who must not be hungry tomorrow. <laughs>